Howdy doody buckaronies, I am currently working on a new vital preset bank, and in this video I wanted to show you a little bit of the behind the scenes process to make wavetables using hardware synths to use in your favorite wavetable synths. By the time this video comes out, the preset bank will be done, so if you want to pick that up to support the channel so I can make more videos like this one, you can find that link down in the description below. So this whole preset bank, which I called Altitude, is made using wavetables I created on my Novation Peak, and this is a really cool way to capture a little bit of the sound of a hardware synth and put it into something like Vital, Serum, Rapid, or whatever you choose. The only requirement for this process is that the synthesizer has to support MIDI. If you use something really old that doesn't support MIDI because it was made before MIDI was a thing, it's a little bit trickier to do. It's not impossible, but this does make it a lot easier. So we're going to be sticking with the Peak because it supports MIDI. It's very flexible and does a lot of cool things to make wavetable creation really fun and really easy. Okay, so off screen here, I've got my Novation peak and we're going to be using this to generate some wavetables. Now the obvious choice I think would be to use the wavetables built into the Novation Peak and scroll through them over time, record that and bring it in as a wavetable into Vital or whatever, but I'm guessing that that's not really legal to do, so we're gonna be creating our own wavetables using the Peak because one, that's more fun, and two, that is legal. I think it's probably somewhere in the terms of the Novation Peak that you can't just use their wavetables, but I don't really know. My general rule with sound design is if you have to question it, it's probably not okay. Getting the setup in Bitwig is pretty straightforward. I've got my hardware instrument device here. This is going through my Arturia AudioFuse Studio. The MIDI is running into the peak. The peak has the outputs going back into the studio, so that is returning through stereo into here. Now, while I could certainly tweak parameters manually, wavetables, generally speaking, you want to be pretty precisely engineered. So for that, I've used the MIDI CC devices down here. These allow me to send out MIDI messages to my peak, which it's going to do different stuff, and then that's how we're gonna create the wavetables. As you can see with these devices, I've set up quite a few different parameters. I actually just saved this as a preset so I can call these up anytime I wanna create stuff with the peak, whether that's wavetables or just you know using it in a song and I wanna modulate different parameters over time. This makes it nice and easy, but how do we find these numbers? If you have a hardware synthesizer or you're borrowing one from someone or renting one, or maybe you're at your friend's house and they have some cool hardware you wanna sample, this is actually really straightforward. Within the manual for the synthesizer, you can look up what is called the MIDI parameters list or MIDI implementation or CC list or CC implementation. It's usually some variation of that name. And what this gives you is every parameter that we can target with CC or NRPN. Now, NRPN is a little bit different than CC and not all DAWs support that, so generally just ignore that. Usually the CC stuff is all the important things anyway, and that's what every DAW should be able to control. If we zoom in here, within this I found all the parameters I wanted to target, so like the wavetable shape. So this is oscillator 1 manual shape, I can see this is CC, and it's number 12. So if we pop back into Bitwig here, I've set this to CC12, this is oscillator 1 shape. Going through that parameter list, I also found the controls for oscillator 2 shape, the ring mod, 3 shape, level of 1, 2, and 3, the filter cutoff, the resonance, the filter drive, and a mod wheel control because I can assign stuff in the mod matrix of the peak to be tied to the mod wheel like the FM or whatever else I want to mess with. So that gives me one good global control that within the routing matrix I can assign to pretty much whatever I want. And this is because some parameters aren't able to be controlled by CC, like the FM depth or something. So I can assign that to the mod wheel and then I have a CC control for whatever parameter I tie to the mod wheel. Now that we've got this set up, we just need to get our wavetable generated. So here I've set up a one bar note, and the note you're going to use is going to be dependent on your DAW and sample rate. So there's a handy chart here that you can follow along with to use the right note. This just makes sure that you're going to get the best results, and this is pretty important. So be sure to use the exact note based on your sample rate. In my case, I run everything at 48K, so I need to use F sharp zero, and I've got this going for one bar. Now, if we initialize the peak, like that, and give this a play. We've got just a regular old saw wave. Now what we're going to do is add automation from these different controls. So let's start off with something relatively simple, like oscillator one shape. Let's take a listen to that. This is going to create a synced saw. Now doing anything that involves phasing can cause wavetables to get weird, so don't use anything involving detuning or time-based effects like chorus or flanger phaser, reverb, or anything like that. You don't want to use unison, you just want mono sounds. So what I'm going to do with this synced saw is just find a point where it sounds interesting. 
I think that has a nice fat sound to it. Now let's bring in the ring mod. So this is ring modding one and two. So right now I've got two saws ring modding each other and they're at the same pitch, which if you know how a ring mod works, that means it's not really gonna do anything. But let's maybe change oscillator two to a triangle and make it an octave up. Now that we've got that, let's bring ring mod down. And we're starting to get something a bit more interesting. Let's change oscillator two shape. Now we've got something really cool going on. So let's try. Sweet, I think that's good. So what we're going to do is bring in the ring mod over time. Now, because we have a one bar long note, you might think you need to do something like this. Now, I find this isn't the best approach. Usually I move one beat in. This way we have just a moment for the parameters to settle in before it starts moving and a little bit of a moment at the end just to stabilize things. Then we'll trim that file up, then we'll use that as our wavetable. So now we've got this set up and I'm gonna use audio two to record the audio from the peak. So we'll arm that. The peak has a lot of hiss for whatever reason, but doesn't really matter too much. So I've got this set to stereo in two, which is where my peak is running in. Let's give this a record and we'll get the wavetable. Cool, so I'm gonna use my slice tool here and I'm gonna cut off at these points. Now this wavetable and this waveform aren't exactly synced. So we could just maybe fix that really quick. We start at 2.1 here. I'm gonna hold shift and just move this so the first cycle starts more or less on that point. It doesn't really need to be perfect, but it does sometimes help. Now we've got that. All right, cool. This wavetable is a little quiet. We could just increase the gain just a tad. We don't want it to clip. So actually right about there, only 2 dB seems to be fine. Now what we're going to do is bounce this. So we'll control B. Now we've got our wavetable bounced out. Let's open up Vital. And I'm gonna go over here to the files. So you click on the project panel way down here and go to files. There's our wavetable we've generated. And in this case, I'm gonna use pitch splice because this is at a given note. And this typically works really well in Vital. If that doesn't work though, you might try the other modes. But typically if you have just a solid stable note, pitch splice should work pretty well. So here we've got this kind of rounded saw. And then we've got that ring mod triangle coming in. So it gets a really interesting modulation. So I think we've got this all set up here. Let's just try LFO one. We'll do one bar and play through this. Cool. It's... Sounds pretty clean. We can hop in here to the edit. Uh, one thing with vital and wavetables, you might need to trim them up a little bit. So we can click on this last keyframe here and click and drag in this point to find where we want the wavetable to end. So let's go to the end here. And we can see at the very end, it actually fades out because Bitwig adds an auto fade. Let's just maybe find the point we want it to end right there. And maybe the beginning is a little boring, so we could just skip ahead a little bit, something like that. And now we've got our final wavetable. Cool. Let's do one more and make it a bit more interesting just to give you a few ideas to run off and do this on your own. So for our first wavetable, it's really not all that complicated and really not all that interesting. It's a saw and a triangle and not much is really happening other than the ring mod. So let's move a couple other parameters around and try something a bit different. I'm gonna change oscillator one to be a wavetable and we'll move through that in time and we'll bring in oscillator three as a wavetable, move through that over time and try a couple of different things to get a cooler sound. All right, so I've got all these oscillators set up. Let's just clear out this modulation and start from the beginning. Let's move through the shape of the oscillators. So let's do maybe something about like this for oscillator one. Cool, let's grab two and shape that a little differently. This is just trial and error. You just kind of wing it and see what you get. Let's bring up the level. I think that ring mod sounds really cool. Just adds a bit of grit to the table. Sweet. Now I think that's sounding pretty good. Let's try oscillator three's level. So that adds just a little bit of extra harmonic content. That sounded pretty nice. A lot of movement going on. Let's maybe bring in some filter. Let's do something like that. We'll just get a little bit of a resonant filter sweep in there. Let's try that. 
Let's open that up more and maybe start a bit more open. And you're going to need to remember that these values are in MIDI. So the filter is actually at a cutoff of 107.24 or just 107 here because MIDI is very fixed. So we need to experiment a little bit and keep in mind that these numbers don't really represent frequency or anything like that. Let's try a bit of filter drive just to thicken up the table. And I think that is sounding pretty cool. So let's record that one out. So we'll back up here. That way these parameters have a second just to get to their starting value. Let's record. Sweet. Let's trim this bad boy up. Looking good. Let's give that a bounce. Let's open vital. And this was bounce 10. So we'll drag that in here to the second oscillator. So we've got bounce 10. Let's tie our LFO to that just to scan through it and make sure we're happy with it. And it's really that easy to get really cool wavetables from hardware synths into whatever you want. And that's really all there is to it. This is a pretty simple process. It's a lot of fun, and it lets you capture some of that hardware magic into your favorite synths. If you want to check out my new Vital Bank, which is called Altitude, you can find that with the link down in the description below, and it helps support the channel so I can make more videos like this one. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something, and I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome. If you make something awesome using this technique, be sure to share it with me on social media or in Discord or whatever. Have a great rest of your day, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.